It is uh, an honor to be here with you and to have Victor uh, by my side. Uh, Victor has been by my side for a number of years now, um, since I worked for General Synod as the Indigenous Justice Coordinator and took a trip to Victoria and met uh, a group of the Diocese of Victoria Aboriginal neighbors that uh, Victor belongs to. And then Victor and I, and many other people, not just Victor and I, took a trip to uh, South Korea. How many years ago now? Three or four? 2008. So four years ago, we went to South Korea for the 55th anniversary of the signing of the armistice. And... Um, visit many of the places where um, some of our Aboriginal veterans had fought. I asked Victor to be by my side because a chaplain cannot speak about chaplaincy without the people that a chaplain ministers to. Uh, and Victor served for well over three decades in the Canadian forces and continues to serve as a veteran and uh, in relation to communities. So I'm going to hand over to, to Victor right now to uh, talk about what it's like for a few minutes about being an Aboriginal person in the Canadian Forces. Thank you, Catherine. It's uh, been a pleasure to, to be with you in, in, in the way we reach out to our community. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Victor Flett. I uh, was born and raised not far from here, Selkirk, Manitoba, uh, at the parish of St. Peter's, uh, a, a historic site uh, three miles north of Selkirk along the Red River. I was born into the Cree Nation. I belong to the Pegwas Band in uh, near Hudson, Manitoba, about 120 miles north of Winnipeg. I am a veteran. I served in the Royal Canadian Navy, as Catherine has mentioned. My service began in 1951 when I volunteered to serve in the Korean War. Uh, I completed one year tour of duty in Korea with the United Nations Special Forces in Korea. I, I ended up serving a career of 33 years in the Navy. The, the military service was in my family, beginning with my maternal grandfather, who was killed in the Battle of Vimy Ridge in France in 1917. My dad also served in the Canadian Army in France in, in World War I. When World War II came, my, my three older brothers joined the military and served in the war one in the Army, one in the Air Force, and one in the Merchant Marine. I retired from the Navy in 1984 and joined a veterans group. I am now president, vice president of the Canadian Aboriginal Veterans and Serving Members Association of Canada. We have a website that we've put a lot of work into and I would urge you to look up that on the website. Catherine mentioned how we experience uh, having a pad padre in the military and uh, being in the Navy. Uh, we would go on cruises, about three or four ships in a group, and we would have one padre who we had to share. And uh, in the older days, we would have to transfer the Padre by Jack's Day from one ship to the other. I don't know whether Catherine experienced that. No, thank God. <laughs> uh, uh, transferring by Jack's Day, we put Catherine into a bosun's chair. We hang the chair onto a, a pulley and she's whisked across from <laughs> one ship to another. <clears throat> and a lot of times they may purposely dip her down. To the <laughs> but, but the Padre uh, person on board ships wa was 
very well appreciated. We would have uh, calamities in our families, and and we would have to uh, ask for a renewal of our faith in these situations. Mm -hmm. And the Padre was always there for that, and that was such a blessing. In closing, I would like to recite the act of remembrance for the veterans who gave their lives in the defense of Canada and for freedom in the world. Many of these veterans were Aboriginal who came from coast to coast to coast. We, will you please rise as I re recite the act of remembrance? They shall grow not old as we who are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Will remember them. Thank you. You may be seated. So Victor is a shining example of one of the best of the Canadian forces, one of the people that I serve. And there are currently about 70,000 Aboriginal people in the regular force, and about 3,000 of them are Aboriginal. And like myself, they can often feel very isolated. As chaplains, we try to connect them with their soul, with their spirit, and connect them with the other people in their units in good ways, but we can't connect them with their home communities. And this is what I ask you to help us with, help us to keep connected with our culture. I have a little daughter who's 19 months on Monday, and she's a beautiful little girl. She's a member of Moose Cree First Nation, but she hasn't been home yet. She hasn't been there because I've only had a few days off in a row since she was born, and it's a long way to get up to Moose Factory. I want her to know her people. I want the other Aboriginal people in the Canadian Forces to be able to connect with their families for their children to know their people, and not just to be known as a base brat when they grow up, but to be known as a proud First Nations person or a proud Inuit. This is where I ask for your help to remember us when we go away, when we sacrifice ourselves and our families for the good of this country. As a chaplain, I'm called to serve all, but I can't do it all. So please help me in partnership with us. Thank you very much. <laughs>